What's up YouTube? My name is John Jagsney and today we are talking about how to roll dice in Cinema 4D. We just finished a promotional video for the game Past the Pandas by Ultra Pro Entertainment and one of the big things about the game is dice rolling. So we did that in Cinema 4D and I'm going to show you. So without further ado, let's dive right into how to roll some dice in Cinema 4D. To kick things off, we obviously need a scene in Cinema 4D. So we have this little bamboo mat here that is on top of a sight wall, which is just a curved plane that'll give us that infinite floor look. We have some lights in our scene to obviously give it some lightings, make it look quite professional. And then we have our dice, obviously. I just have them oriented at random angles that I just threw up here. And now what we're going to do is simulate some dice rolling because doing this manually would take a lot of time. So how do we do that? We're gonna first select our dice. And we're gonna right click and go to simulation tags. Boop. Then we'll click on rigid body. Now, you can see here on my bamboo plane and my plane, I have another tag right here. This is a collider body, and to access that, you can just select those, right click, and then go to simulation tags and collider body. Now, nothing's happening right now. What, why is that? Well, if we go to frame zero and we hit the space bar, they fell, Woohoo! Now what we gotta do is, um, get these to look a little bit more lifelike and organic. So let's go back to frame zero. And the way we're doing this, it can sometimes be a little finicky with the animation because it's trying to cache and calculate things all the time. So we're gonna get to baking this, which is locking in the animation in just a few moments. But first we wanna start with getting a dice roll that looks natural to what we might see in the real world. So we're gonna go to our dice and we're gonna select all of our rigid body tags. So we click on the top one, hold shift, and then click on the bottom one. That will select all of them in a line. And we'll bump up the bounce. So I'll say, let's make this 30%. And then we'll just zoom out, hold two on the keyboard, and pull our camera back just a little bit. That doesn't look that bad. And how does that resolve? How does the dice look? Yeah, that looks good we got some balance of the different faces on the dice now for this game it's not a traditional one through six dice the me mechanics work a little differently so my goal with this promo was to make sure that i was showing all the different faces of the dice so there's one problem here we don't have the water facing up so this comes into baking the animation what we could do is either just roll this constantly until we get something that we like or go in and futz with it after we get that initial look. So I'm pretty cool with this dice resolve, how they rolled. Now I need to bake this. So let's click on all of our dice and we'll click on the dynamics body and we'll scroll down to cache and we will click on bake objects. And now if we play that back, it should look exactly like we just rolled. It just sort of saves that information so Cinema 4D doesn't have to calculate that all the time. Now, I wanna get one of the dice to show water, the little water droplet, instead of the blank side. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our dice and we're gonna right click on them and click show F curves. We have all of our dice here. We can just make those smaller and we'll click on functions and bake objects. And what this will do is it'll add lots and lots of keyframes. These keyframes are the dice roll that just Cinema 4D calculated so we didn't have to do any animation so far. Let's uh, close that really quick and let's just play that back. Zoom out. looks the same. All right, so I want this dice right here to be the water droplet. So I know I need to rotate it, but if I were to go in here and, and just try and rotate it, it doesn't rotate every single keyframe with it. So we're gonna click on this dice copy copy. We can take the old ones that we just had and we can drag those down or we could just delete them if we know we're not gonna reuse them. We're gonna select those and then right click, go to F curves, show F curves. When 
window. There we go. All right, so we're looking at this dice right here. All right, so we're gonna open that up and we see all these keyframes. Now we just want to access one or two of the rotation properties and work with that. So we're going to click on everything else that's not there and we can go to view, hide, hide selected items. Now we can select individual for that dice three. Now. I want the rotation, so we're gonna zoom out. We can hold the one and two keys on our keyboard to navigate and set up our view. And now let's see what happens if we rotate this, the pitch. And yeah, okay, so we can, from here, just rotate enough so that we can get an oriented dice that gives us the look that we want. Now we just need to make sure it lays flat. And typically these are in increments of 90. So I want this value, this flat line to be as close to 450 as possible. Now where did I get 450? It's 90 degrees is where that dice will lay flat on a table and if I multiply or divide rather, if I divide 450 divided by 90, it's five. So there's five rotations that happened and it's as clean as I can get it, as close to that 45 mark. So, or a multiple of 90. So let's see if I just go in real close there, holding the one and two key. Boop. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so now if we just zoom out and then we can just look at that. Let's reorient our camera and close that. Boop, boop, and then let's just give that a playback. Deselect everything. Oh, come on. Deselect everything and play. Yeah, you know what? That looks pretty natural. I'm pretty happy with that. And if we had to do this manually, we would either have had to roll a dice a lot to try and get that, or we could just go into the curves and get the dice resolve that we want. So from here, what you could do is you could export this out from Cinema 4D, or you could bring this into Unreal, or you could bring this into After Effects. Now, there's a thousand ways to skin the cat. What I'm gonna show you is how I would bring this into After Effects. So this is the quick and dirty method if we just want to export something fast from Cinema 4D into After Effects. The way we do that is we need another third party plugin that is Element 3D. So we're going to hit Control Y on our keyboard and make a new solid. Click OK after we rename it. Mint. And we will go to our effects and presets and we'll wait for that to load. Load, 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 load. Element. We'll drop that onto our background, onto our solid. Now we'll go into scene setup and we'll open up element 3D. Now let's rewind just a little bit. There's one thing we do have to do in our project file for Cinema 4D and that is saving for Cineware. So we're gonna hit Control D on our keyboard and that will bring up our project settings. We'll go to Cineware. You just have to make sure that these checkboxes are activated. And then if you go into your project settings, make sure your frame rate is whatever you're trying to export as. And then if you go to your render settings, also set the output to 24 frames per second. So we can close that, we can hit save, control S on your keyboard, go back to After Effects and we'll click on import for element 3D. We can navigate to whatever file we have. I know I was using tutorial number two and we'll make sure we set model align from model and yeah, all that stuff looks good. We'll click okay and hey, interesting. Our scene is here. And if we click OK and we close that, we'll hit Control Alt Shift C on our keyboard and that will make a new camera. I like working with two node cameras, so we'll click OK. And then if we hit C in our keyboard, we can start moving a camera around 
and orienting. Now, we have the dice up there, and if we play that back, cool. We're getting somewhere, but there's one thing that you do have to click on in Element 3D to make this work. So let's go back into our scene setup, and we will go to our dice material, and we'll scroll all the way down and draw back faces. This is just a bug that I've found keeps happening with Element 3D and Cinema 4D, but if you draw back faces, click OK, it'll fill in everything there. And then we can get closer, move our camera around, play that back, and it plays back pretty close to real time. If we had to export this from Cinema 4D, might take a while, Unreal would be faster. Strength and, strengths and benefits from each one, this is the quick and dirty way. Now from here we could add some lights to our scene, so let's just add a parallel light, which is kind of like a sun, and then we can just click on P, and then orient that where we want it, and then we'll hit Control alt l Control alt shift l once again, add a spotlight or a point light, and then we'll just move that over there, just so we can get a little bit of fill. And then we'll go into element 3D, render settings, shadows, enable shadows, go into ambient occlusion, enable ambient occlusion, go into your parallel light. Bring that up just a little bit. Just give it a little bit extra life. Move our camera around. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Obviously, you could fuss with this more. The way we rendered this for the original promo is we added some bamboo in the Unreal Engine, but that's a story for another time. Today, we covered how to roll a dice, and that's really what I wanted to talk about today, so I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. If you didn't and you have questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section as well, or on Instagram, at John Jagsney. And that's it. I will leave you with this. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Goodbye, my friends. Bye! Bye.